It's so good to be in church this morning and to fellowship uh, together. I'm so glad to be with us and uh, with my family. I'd like you to um, turn with me, if you have your Bibles, to Psalm 103, and I'll read the first five verses. Psalm 103, verses 1 to 5. David says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. 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 I'd like us to look at uh, this scripture under the subject, count your blessings. Count your blessings. Thinking about the hymn we just had this morning, and I just thought to myself how relevant, even though written so many years ago, how relevant the words of the hymns are today. Is a reminder to be grateful. To him, count your blessings. It's a reminder to be grateful. Since this uh, current pandemic uh, broke, I've been really thinking about these and you know reading these lines. And the hymn was written by Johnson Oldsman Jr., who grew up under a father who was a hymn writer and he was an evangelical Methodist and he wrote this song in 1897 and he went on to write um, about 5,000 5, other hymns and songs but one thing that I learned was that he was happy that in his musical gigs he had found a way to preach the gospel through the musical gifts that he had. He found a way to preach the gospel. It's a hymn about gratitude, like I said, and it's a call to rise above, above discouragement, doubt, envy, and self-pity. It's a call to rise above all these things. And the past five to six months have been very difficult the world over, especially here in the UK. But I make bold to say that God is still alive and in control of the world's events. Coronavirus or not, I believe he's got the whole world in his hands. We cannot see all that God is doing and all that God will do. But we will rest assured that he is God and that he will do what is right. Sometimes God works in mysterious ways and sometimes he works silently that we cannot all see. But he is God and he is a loving father. He still loves us no matter what we go through. He loves us no matter who we are. At every point in our lives, Sometimes we go through things that we can just ask, where are you, God? 
I believe we must have passed through such circumstances in our lives. But no matter what, he is still God. While I was growing up, I remember there was a little plaque in our, in our, in our family, in our house. Then uh, I, I can't really, you know, I don't know if it was my dad or uh, one of my uh, older siblings that put it there. But I just remembered the words of the plague. It says, God is the head of this household. The unseen guest at every meal. The silent listener at every conversation. He is there all the time. Even when we don't feel like it, he is always there, working out his purposes for our lives. And so when we know this, he can give us confidence and hope in a confusing world. And the world right now is confused. We live in a confusing world uh, at this moment. But we can grow in our hope and confidence, even in a confused state. We don't know the next uh, government regulation. We don't know if there will be um, another lockdown. We don't know what is happening. Uh, but still, I believe that God is still alive. It is quite natural to praise God when things are good. It's quite natural. You know, when the going is good, that's, that's when it is best. You know, people find it easier to have a heart of gratitude when things are going uh, the way we expected them. But it's always a struggle to find reasons to praise God in difficult and unprecedented times. It's always a struggle. When people are successful and safe, Oh, they feel they are lucky. They feel happy, right? But when things are not going the way we planned, sometimes we don't feel that very happy. But when we feel that way, let's remember the words of David from this psalm today. It's a psalm of David. We don't know the circumstances in which uh, the psalm was written. But since King David was a man who knew the grace and deliverance of God at so many different times in his life, he could have been written this psalm at many different times in his life. He called upon his soul to bless Yahweh. It, it was as if he looked at his soul and understood that it was not praising God enough. And he called upon his soul to do more. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless his holy name. He used repetitions, you, you find out. And uh, re repetition in, in scripture is always almost for emphasis. Uh, and it is a pattern of Hebrew poetry to use repetition. And whenever the Bible repeats something, it is something that we should pay attention to. And even today, adverts and commercial jingles, they use the power of repetition to make consumers to crave more and more of their products. You know, they say it every now and then, and they repeat it. And it's a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a pattern to make us to think about what they are having to offer. But I've always, I've always asked myself, I don't need your jingles to, to discover what I need. <laughs> All right? The thing is that people just want things, but they don't need it. And uh, you, you could just open your wardrobe and you will see some of the, some of the clothes and, and some of the wares and the shoes you've not used. For so many months. You don't you don't just you don't just need them. But you just there was uh, probably a sale going on at Debenhams and you find yourself spending more than you should have. Think about it when 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 next you see a sale going on. Do I really need it? <laughs> anyway, the adverts and you know they, they do all that with the intent of making people 
to think about it and grab it and, and, and want more of those. And our Master Jesus also used repetitions uh, when he walked the earth. In John chapter 5, verse 24, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. He said, truly, truly. He repeats it so that you will, your attention will go. In Matthew 27, verse 46, he also said, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God. Why have you forsaken me? In John 21, 15 to 17, he says, when, Jesus, when, when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time. He repeats it. He said to him a, a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. You see it. He said to him the first time, trying to draw his attention. He said to him the second time, and he said to him the third time. It's interesting that Simon had denied Jesus how many times? Three times. And it's interesting that Jesus said to him also three times. Perhaps he was giving him an opportunity to think about himself and think about his life and to make amends. Perhaps he was giving him time of reconciliation, of deliverance, of bringing him back. But I, well, as I read this, I, I just asked myself, why did Jesus call him Simon? son of Jonah, and not Peter. Because Jesus had earlier said he was Peter, right? Yeah, but right now, Jesus never called him with that name. He called him Simon, son of John, son of Jonah. Uh, it, it's like Jesus was now referring to his true self, referring to who he was. You know, we, we don't need to, uh, I mean, who we are is, is quite open to the Lord. Right? And it's also interesting as I read this that Jesus said, Do you love me more than these? Do you love me more than these? And you remember before this time, uh, Simon uh, told the other ones that he was going fishing and you know, they, they, they joined him, they went fishing and uh, they caught, well, initially they didn't catch uh, some fish. They tried all night until Jesus appeared at the shore and asked them to cast their nets at the right side. And then they ended up catching a lot of fish. And afterwards, Jesus invited them to a breakfast he had already prepared for them. And after the, this breakfast, Jesus engaged uh, Peter in a conversation and asked him these questions. Uh, there had been some, some school of thought saying uh, Jesus was asking him if he loved him more than the disciples. Or if he loved him more than he loved the other disciples. But I believe that Jesus was asking him if he loved him more than his equipment, the fish he has caught, or more than what he was doing at that time. Because um, I discovered that Jesus, you know, we have a love translated in English, uh, but in the Greek word, 
Jesus used the first time, do you love me, agape? Why Jesus asked him, do you, do, do you agape me? Uh, Peter answered, Lord, you know I filia you. He used filia. While Jesus used agape, he used filia. Probably he was thinking, well, I don't know if I'm good enough because I, 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 I denied him the other time. I don't know if I really loved him. But Jesus was asking him, do you have the self-sacrificial love for me? And he was asking, well, you know that I fear you. And Jesus asked him the second time, did you agape me? And he said, well, you know, I, he used philia. And then the third time, Jesus decided to use what he used and said, and use philia. Did, do you love me as, as a person? And then he broke down and said, Lord, you know, you know all things. You know that I love you. Even though I messed it up, you know that I love you. Even though it didn't go the way I had wanted. He had boasted, you know, before then, uh, before the Lord's Supper. He had boasted, Lord, even if the rest disappoint you, I'm not going to disappoint you. But just some moments after then, he denied Jesus. And so he was feeling, um, he was feeling dejected. He was feeling not like it. Let me tell you, God does not look at you the way you look at yourself. God looks at you the way he made you. And one day in my life, God told me that he assesses me by where I'm going, not by where I am. Because you might be at a time in your life that you don't have anything to, to, to write home about, to anything to thank God for. But I believe that if you can look inwards, there are things that you can discover that you will give God praise for. And so Jesus used, you know, repetition, like I said, and drove home his point to Peter. And he was restored, I believed, at that moment. And so I believe Jesus was asking him, do you love me more than you love these things, your fishing nets? Because just after then, Jesus told him, feed my sheep, feed my lamb, and tend my sheep. To feed, thinking about bringing people to Christ and thinking about the new believers. And to tend, thinking about both the young believers and the mature believers. To teach them, to direct them, to give oversight. And so I believe that that was what Jesus was referring to. Do you love me? Are you going to go back? your profession or are you going to stick to my calling follow me and I will make you fishers of men you are not just going to end up having to be an ordinary fisher of fish but you are going to fish for men so do you love me enough not just to go back to your fishing for fish but to fish for men that what Jesus asked him by using all those. My prayer is that the Lord will speak to us and that we will be able to understand. As human beings, we are very apt to forget that we require continual uh, reminding not to do so. And so, what other time not to forget the goodness of God than at this time of our lives. Forget not all his benefits. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless his holy name. To bless God in this passage is not uh, like uh, a superior one, uh, you know, give something uh, to an inferior one. 
but it is to remember his benefits, to remember what he has done, to remember his good deeds, to remember, like David remembered his deliverance, deliverance of the Lord in the hands of Saul, deliverance at several times of his life, even when things were not going the right way. Oh, my soul, you need to remember to bless the Lord. And what are his benefits? His benefits are his actions, his work, his doing, and whether good or bad. You know, sometimes God does things in our lives that don't go the way we expected them to go. Right? But he is still God. There are sometimes we pray that things will go this direction, but they don't always go in that direction. So all his benefits, when we receive it the way we wanted, or the way that he had wanted, all his benefits bless his holy name. And so his dealings with the psalmist has been such to call for praise and gratitude. No matter how difficult our journey, we can look back and we can praise God. And so believe me when I say it, that we need to find ways to bless the Lord. Even at this time, people's life, lives have been affected. In health, you know, in, in the, people have lost their jobs. And there is a charity called Refuge. I, I, I was watching the news the other day. They reported at this time there have been a 700% increase in distress calls that they receive uh, in their helpline during this lockdown. And there has been also a tenfold increase in visits to their websites and people uh, calling in, ringing in and, and, uh, for help. And also there has been an increase in domestic uh, violence at this time, both in the UK and across the world. And major companies are laying, are laying off uh, staff at this time. It's, it's, it's an unprecedented time. But still, we can praise God. We can find reasons to bless the name of the Lord. Child poverty is on the rise. Uh, in, the, in, our, in our nation and, and all the nations of the world, yeah, there is hunger everywhere, and the UK economy is, of, is said to have shrunk, I think 9.5% or so. Uh, there is global recession, and um, the hospitality industry has been impacted, uh, and um, the effects of the COVID is, is everywhere. But I remind us that we need to bless the name of the Lord. Habakkuk's hymn of faith in Habakkuk uh, 3, 17 to 19 says, Though the fig tree may not blossom, no fruits be on the vine. Though the labor of the olive may fall, and the fields yield no food, though the flock may be cut off from the fold, and there be no herd in the stalls. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like their feet. And he will make me walk on my high heels. Habakkuk's feelings were not controlled by the events around him, but by faith in God's ability to give him strength. Even in times of starvation and loss, he said he will rejoice in the Lord. When nothing makes sense and when troubles seem to be everywhere, let's remember that God will give us strength. God is, will give his followers strength and confidence in this difficult time. David's praise focused on the good things that God was doing for him. And he reminded himself to worship God 
for he is good. True worship is something that flows from inwards. True worship is flows from our spirit. It's not just about outward expression, but it's something that comes from our souls. Someone has said that worship is the highest form of love. And I really believe that. True worship is not demanded. It comes from your sense of love for someone. And then you worship the Lord. He wanted everything in him. And he set his heart in tune as well as setting his instruments in, in tune. Let's set our hearts in tune and set everything around us in tune to worship God and to praise him. And there was somebody in the scriptures who did not remember or who forgot the benefits of God. Hezekiah in 2 Chronicles 32 verse 25, he says, But Hezekiah did not repair according to the favor shown him, for his heart was lifted up. Therefore wrath was looming over him and over Judah and Jerusalem. May God help us when we don't have anything to give God praise to discover David's list. And I will close with these six things that David had listed that he needed to do and that the, the, the Lord you know, did. From verse 3 of where we read, it says, He forgives your sins. When we turn to God through repentance, He imputes to us His righteousness and adopts us as his own children. He forgives us. You know, that's one of the things we, we need to remember and give God praise. He forgives all our, our, our sins, our iniquities. He doesn't remember them anymore. Sometimes when we think about our past and about what we have done, I imagine that the Lord might be you know, saying to himself, what is he thinking about? What is he saying? You know, sometimes you don't forgive yourself, even when the Lord has forgiven you. You know, sometimes you think, oh, I, I did this, I, you know, I still did that. But the Lord will say to you, I don't remember what you're saying. I have forgiven you. And let's remember that we serve a God who forgives all our sins. He says, who heals your diseases? And God heals us both spiritually, both physically, and both in our minds. But here, David was referring to physical healing. But nonetheless, 3 John chapter 2, you remember? He says, beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health, even as your soul prospers. And for me, healing is not just physical. Healing is all around. And he is willing to heal us. He is willing to heal us in our minds, he heal our body, heal our relationships. He is willing to heal our finances. He is will he willing to bring healing our way. Who redeems us from death? He redeems us. And Ephesians chapter 1, 3 to 7 says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him, having predestined us to the adoption of as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. Redemption has come from the Greek word apolutrosis, and which talks about deliverance 
from sin through Christ's atonement. And someone says the other day, it was at one moment. He did it once and he has done it. He has redeemed us from destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies. God is the one that crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Yesterday, while I was praying and reading uh, this scripture, I thought to myself, God is not some sort of mean, narcissistic, and uh, angry guy somewhere. He is a loving God. He is not one that is looking out for you to look when you will fall with a weeping hand and burning and frowning face. That's not the kind of God we have. He is a loving God. He is holy, but he is not mean. He is righteous, but he is not strict. He is a judge, but he will do with total fairness and equity and purpose. And finally, he says, who fills your life with good things. He fills my life with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. You remember Isaiah 40 verse 31? He says, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and they will not faint. They will walk and they will not be weary. And so growing old is mandatory, but feeling old is optional. <laughs> he renews my youth. <laughs> there are people who don't feel like they are 80, they are 90. They feel, you know, so it's optional <laughs> to you. But he gives us his loving kindness. And so, and finally he says, he gives righteousness and justice. May the Lord help us to remember that in all things we should give him praise. And we can really find reasons to give him praise. He loves us. He loves us even more than we love ourselves. And may the Lord bless us. May the Lord bless our nation. May the Lord bless the nations of the world. And give us a way to find positive things. And not dwell on the negative ones. And you know what I've done this time? You know, because we have a lot, a lot of times in our hands... Sometimes I catch myself watching, you know, news, BBC and, and CNN. And sometimes I say to myself, nope, I shut it down. I listen to the word of God. Enough of all those of negative news. I listen to the word of God and build faith in myself. Because when you listen to all those things, sometimes it's good to listen to them so that you can, you know, inform yourself enough to pray, right? But when you feel yourself and your mind, sometimes you become depressed with, with what is happening. But you need to fill yourself with the word of God sometimes. Positive things. And the Lord bless us as we do this. And uh, b before I pray, perhaps there is someone you know, watching on the internet that needs to give your life to Christ. It is quite simple to do so. Is just to recognize that we cannot save ourselves and that Christ has given himself and has shed his blood for our sins. And just to realize that when I come to him, he will not cast me out. And why, wherever you are, you just you know, kneel down and pray for yourself and accept Christ in your mind. And I will suggest this song uh, you can sing that, you know, later on, whenever. It, it's a song by Hillsong. It says, so will I. 100 billion times. If everything will praise God, so will I. If the galaxies will praise God, so will I. Let us pray. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. 
We thank you, Lord, because we know that you love us even before we thought of loving you. You are a loving Father. And you have made everything, O oh Lord, to praise you. And so if everything will praise you, so will I. Heavenly Father, I pray for all those listening right now. And I pray for ourselves, Lord. May you walk your works in our lives. Lord, we pray for our families. We pray for ourselves. We pray for our nation mm -hmm. at this time. And I pray, oh Lord, right now, perhaps there is someone that is depressed, someone suffering from any form of depression. Heavenly Father, may your Holy Spirit move in their hearts. And Lord, may your help come to them wherever they are. Lord, may your word remind us to be grateful to you and to worship you and to find reasons to praise your name. I pray for deliverance, Lord. Let it come to them at this moment. I pray, O oh Lord, for those who are passing through some mental health issues at this time, probably due to the, uh, the, the pandemic. Lord, I pray that your Holy Spirit will move in the minds of such people. I pray for anyone, O oh Lord, who is feeling anxious at this time. I pray for those who are having uh, substance abuse in their lives. Heavenly Father, may there be deliverance. I pray for those who are passing through PTSD. Lord, may your word bring deliverance. I pray for someone, Lord, who is having some eating disorders at this period. Lord, I pray that you will help them to walk through the road of deliverance. I pray, O oh Lord, for people who have been bereaved at this time, who have lost loved ones, we have been affected one way or another. But Lord, you are still a loving Father. I pray, O oh Lord, and we pray that they will find reasons, O oh Lord, to praise you. It's difficult, Lord, I believe. I know it's difficult. But your word has told us to bless you, to find reasons to bless your name. Lord, I pray for someone who is having sickness physically at this time. I believe you are the Lord that heals all our diseases. May there be healing, O oh Lord, in their bodies. The healing, O oh Lord, even in the mind, in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray, O oh Lord, for people who have lost their jobs. Lord, be with them. And Lord, we pray that you will show them a way of escape. We pray for people who have been affected even financially in different ways. Heavenly Father, may you walk with them, O oh Lord, and let there be deliverance. We pray for relationships that are shaking at this time. Lord, we pray that you will walk with them and there will be healing all around for us. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the governments of the nations at this time. We pray that you will give them wisdom to really come up with regulations that will be for the benefit of the common people. Mm -hmm. We pray for people who are walking, Lord, in the front lines, the health workers, and every key worker, oh Lord, every one of us, when we go out, may you be with us, Lord, and bless those who put their lives on the line for others. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we thank you, for we believe that your love is constant. Mm -hmm. You loved us, oh Lord, and you keep on loving us. Thank you for your word. May we always bless your holy name. And may your name alone be glorified. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. And before I, I, I close with sharing in, in the grace, and, um, remember the song I mentioned, if you, you, know, if you find time, uh, just just listen to that song. Um, it's a song that will um, you know encourage us to to worship God because the creation uh, worships God. And may the Lord be with us this week.
and in whatever we do and, and bless us and increase us on every side. Thank you, Lord, for we believe your blessings. We believe your grace will always be with us. And so, Lord, as we leave now, may your grace, may your blessings be with us. May your faith, O oh Lord, shine on us. May you show us your peace. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 God bless you.